Good evening, and welcome to our weekly service of evening prayer. Tonight, Reverend Spencer and I lead you in prayer for our community and our congregation with a special focus that God would use us as peacemakers and agents of God's desire for reconciliation in our world. Conversations about race are increasingly loaded and contentious. We thank God as we recognize real progress made in our nation while also praying and working for more. I'd like to share a few announcements with you. First, we are having our congregational meeting, our annual meeting, in, on February 6th at 12.15. It will be offered via Zoom. Also wanted to let you know about a Lenten prayer retreat. That's going to be from March 15th to the 18th. Pa uh, Pastor Spencer will be leading this four-day, three-night retreat at Holy Cross Monastery in New York. Holy Cross is an Episcopal community of faith. And so you're invited to join members from First Presbyterian Church and friends of our congregations from other churches for a study of the parable of the prodigal son. There will be time for rest, for reflection, and most importantly, for prayer and renewal. You can register online by visiting our church website. The deadline is Sunday, February 13th. I also invite you to keep an eye on our church website and in our weekly worship guide for information on this year's Lenten study. For this year, we will be looking at an old 19th century Eastern Orthodox book called The, Pil the, Pilgrim, <laughs> the Way of a Pilgrim. This book captures a young man who is on a spiritual journey where he is hungry and thirsting to fully realize and understand what it means to be a person who prays, but a person, more importantly, who prays without ceasing, as the Apostle Paul challenges us in 1 Thessalonians. So keep an eye out. It's going to be a great time to reflect on what does prayer look like in each of our lives, and how does God challenge us uh, to become more disciplined as people in prayer? Our way of the week, number eight, jump in. Life is full of unexpected problems and needs, both large and small. Pay attention to moments when God calls you to action, no matter how ordinary or extraordinary the situation may be. See disruptions as invitations, invitations to share Christ's love. Write a note. Visit the sick or the grieving. Share a meal with someone. Some ideas for action. Practice one of the actions listed in this week's description. Write a note. Visit someone who lives alone. Share a meal. From 1 John 3, 18. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other, but let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before God. Friends, I invite you to jump in to the ministry that God has called each and every one of us to in proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ.
As we prepare to pray, let me share with you this wonderful verse from Psalm 86, verse 1. Bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. I've always loved this image, as it's found in Scripture, of God bending down low to hear every word, every sigh, every groan, even those things that we can't even express with words. This is how the Lord God listens to us tonight as we pray. Before we turn to praying for racial reconciliation, I want to share with you a few prayer updates. We'll pray for those things before we turn to our prayer on reconciliation. Thomas Cannon suffered a mini stroke and was in the hospital last week. He is now in the rehab unit at Cadbury in Cherry Hill. I spoke with Evelyn on Sunday. She is as she always is, filled with joy in the Holy Spirit, Thomas is feeling better. Vonnie Camp is currently at Cambridge, formerly the Lutheran home on Main Street in Morristown. Vonnie was in the hospital, uh, becoming quite sick with COVID. She is uh, now recovering and doing well at the Cambridge uh, Center. Jan Amos on Tuesday underwent a procedure on her back, Tuesday also happened to be Jan's birthday. She came through the procedure well. She was in a little bit of discomfort, but when I spoke with her on Tuesday evening, she and Bill both sounded great. Melissa Corbin is asking that we remember a friend's son, Eric Pluckhorn. Eric's a young man who underwent heart surgery on Tuesday to repair a congenital defect in his heart. Mark Bell, one of our newer members, asks that we continue to pray for his brother Brian, who had eye surgery. Cheryl and Leonard Fitz request prayer for a friend, Victor Washington, who is undergoing treatment for bladder cancer. And finally, Jim Webb, Weber's sister, Joyce Morley, is beginning chemotherapy for brain cancer. The fact that Joyce is alive is a miracle, according to her doctors. We want to pray now for her healing. Remember, as Wes and I lead you in prayer, that you're always welcome to push the pause if you want a little more time to pray over a matter. When you're ready to continue, just push play. Friends, let us be joined together in prayer as God's people. Lord God, you are the one who dwells in a high and holy place, but also among those who are broken and contrite in heart. Lord, in these weeks of January and soon February, we are thinking about, as the word of God is proclaimed, we're thinking about humility. And Lord, we're considering what it would be like for us as your people individually, but also as a congregation, to be known for humility. So we turn to you, Lord, you who dwell in a place that is high and exalted, but also in a place that's lowly, a place of brokenness. Lord, may we seek you in those high and low places, for we'll not find you, Lord, in the comfortable middle ground. Tonight we seek you for ourselves, but also for those who have asked for our prayers. We pray tonight for Thomas and Evelyn Cannon as Thomas continues to gain strength from his stroke. We pray for our dear friend, Vonnie Camp, praying, Lord, that she would be filled with peace, that she would feel better and stronger, that she'll be able to go home soon. We pray for Jan and Bill Amos. Thank you, Lord, that you've brought Jan through this procedure. We thank you, Lord, for the joy and the blessing of this couple, we commend Jan to your full care. We pray for Eric Pluckhorn. As he recovers from a surgery he's already experienced this week, we pray, Lord, for this young man that you would heal his heart. Bless Mark Bell's brother, Brian, from his eye surgery. In addition to blessing his physical healing, would you minister to every aspect of Brian's life? We pray, Lord, for the friend of Cheryl and Leonard Fitz, Victor Washington, as he undergoes treatment 
for cancer. Lord, restore his health. Bring to him great joy. Bless his family and friends. We pray, Lord, as well for Joyce Morley, Jim Weber's sister. Lord, she'll be starting chemotherapy very soon. We know this can create a great strain on people's lives. Thank you that Joyce is alive. Would you give to her more life and more healing? Lord, we offer all of these prayers in the name of Jesus and for his sake. We now turn to praying for racial reconciliation. To the Father of every family on earth, to Jesus, the great reconciler, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit healer of our broken hearts, have mercy. We bow our knees before you. Thank you that in your love you bring sin into light. Forgive us as a nation for the darkness of division and racism that exists in our cities, neighborhoods, churches, and in our view of one another. Have mercy. Merciful God, carve humility in our souls, both individually but collectively here at First Presbyterian Church of Morristown. Pour the oil of your spirit into our pain, fear, and confusion. Today, empower us to move toward each other in compassion, quickness to listen, and honor for the sacredness of every image-bearing human being. Give us courage to boldly uncover oppression and grace to hear each other's pain regarding race. We reject both division and denial. We reject the devaluing of human life. Father, you've given us the ministry of reconciliation, and we cry out to you for guidance and clear steps to take. Thank you for the changes and progress that we've seen occur in our nation by your grace. Lead us by your spirit. Lord, awake, awaken humble conversations between neighbors and friends across this country. Wash our relationships with healing. Rebuild trust that's been broken and protect our existing bridges of connection. Lord Jesus, we join your prayer in John 17. Make us one with each other and with you. Give us the endurance and commitment it takes to do the hard work of true unity. Jesus, the one who knows our humanity, the one who weeps with us, help us. Help us follow you on the narrow road of love. Amen. Lord God, we offer these prayers in our lives to you as we offer our congregation for you to shape, to mold, to strengthen, and to use, Lord, for whatever your desired purposes and will are. We pray in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours and abide with you always. Amen. Thank you.